Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time I'm going to be showing you another Mermail combo tutorial. Well, I guess it would be more accurate to call it an Atlantean combo tutorial, since we don't really use any Mermail cards explicitly in this combo, but it's a combo tailored for and catered towards playing the Mermail deck, post Master Rule 5's implementation, and post April 1st, 2020 for an unlimited list. Devo is at 3, this is before Eternity Code gets put into the metagame, adding the pool of cards we can use and adding the uh, play lines that we can go down but what this is this is the one card diva play that takes two cards out of your opponent's hand with mulan glacia and ends on a four material Lapalusa with a totally awesome it does a lot for one card it is a purely a one card play it doesn't matter what cards you have in your hand you don't have to discard anything you don't have to do any of that sort of nonsense and i should say it's a play that i don't particularly prefer to make i will always make a different play if the play is available to me through even something as simple as my hand being D.Va plus any water monster. But I have been streaming this deck a lot. Several, several hours of testing has been done with this deck on my own personal stream of me just playing this deck against viewers and other people. And this play has come up specifically twice. And I made room in the extra deck for the pieces to play it because it doesn't take that many extra deck pieces. So it's just one of those things that I'm playing the pieces for and if it comes up, it comes up. Occasionally it comes up. Uh, like I said, two times in several hours worth of playtesting uh, with this deck where the only card in my hand was copies of D.Va in terms of like what cards I could use and the rest were just all cards that weren't doing anything. It was like D.Va's and multiple Call by the Graves and Pot of Avarices and stuff. So it's one of those things where it'll come up and it really doesn't make any sense not to play the pieces for it. But personally, I do not prefer this combo because I think any of the other combos are a lot more interactive and a lot more surefire going to be things that end the game. Because while this card does do a lot in terms of the combo it generates from it, it's one of those things that the ending board isn't that strong. Uh, and yeah, you do have four other cards in your hand that could be doing something on the following turn, but it's just one of those things of, while it theoretically is a lot of interactions with Opelousa being four materials and a Toad, it's one of those things where Opelousa gets weaker, and so they could just bait its negate once and probably swing over it. 2400 is a pretty easy break point. Uh, in terms of like things to swing over and even if that isn't 16 is so Opelousa is not going to be getting like full value there's just a lot of weird little intricacies to it but i'm going to show you this one card diva combo uh before i show you that if you're new here consider subscribing i'd love to show you more stuff uh love to welcome you on board and hit that little bell icon so you actually see my videos in your subscription feed if you want to see them and other than that if you like this video be sure to drop a like if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them in the comments down below Look at the description for my Twitch page where I stream multiple times a week. I'm probably streaming now, maybe, if you are watching this video in the first couple hours of it going live. Just, you know, things to consider. But anyway, let me just show you this because I've been rambling for a while. Now, like I said, I don't personally prefer this combo, but it's one of those things that you should know. It's one of those things that there's not... Once you cut some of the fat out of your extra deck and, like, sort of your deck build starts reaching a streamlined point of what you're trying to do with it then you start getting to the point where you can cut cards out of your extra deck and not miss them and play things like Opelousa and the Bujin uh link that we're using but so this play normal summon diva get an Eptibus from your deck obviously send dragoons and add dragoons and then your dragoons is going to trigger specifically adding lapis dragon we want to leave the Neptibus on the board but we also want to be making Kristron halk fibrax also known as Needle Fiber. But so, Lapis Dragon will activate its effect to summon itself, and then we are going to link away into the Needle Fiber, Halka Fibrax, with Diva and Lapis Dragon, summoning the Needle Fiber up here. Now, we're going to summon Fishborg Launcher from our deck because we specifically want it to be a water and a level one. So you can't get Jet Synchron here and have the play be the same uh, play line because you would have to have like another water to discard or something. Well, I mean, I guess you could theoretically do Jet Synchron, but this is better. This is strictly better uh, because it allows your deck building to be more streamlined, which allows you to even have the room for these pieces. And this played in a lot of other combos as well that are better than this one, in my opinion. But we're going to link two level ones into the Bujin link. For those of you that don't know what this card is, this card is two monsters with the same level. So Neptibus plus Fishborg Launcher cannot be used as a link material. You can only use each of the following effects of Bujinki Ashima uh, once per turn, or Ahashima. 
once per turn. If this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon two monsters with the same level, one from your hand and one from your graveyard, but negate their effects, and immediately after this effect resolves, Xyz Summon one Xyz monster using those two materials only. And then a second effect is if an Xyz monster's card points to activates its effect by detaching materials, except during damage step, you can target a spell or trap your opponent uh, controls and destroy it. So, like, that comes up a fair bit sometimes, but this is the main thing we're using it for. On Link Summon, its effect will activate, especially Dragoons from Graveyard and the Dragoons we added to our hand. Now, this is what sort of makes me really not like this combo. <laughs> it's because, yes, you get to go straight into a Bahamut Shark with your two Dragoons, but you are wasting the second Dragoons by doing this. If your hand had any other form of extension, whether it's a Teus, a Megalo, uh, other water monsters to enable you to add Megalo instead of Lapis Dragon from the Dragoons, those are just better play lines because this puts the Dragoons under the Bahamut Shark and traps it there. So we are not able to get use out of the second Dragoons that we added to our hand. Now we summoned it and, you know, made an Xyz with it. Nice. But any other level four here would just be better, but you can't summon Aqua Spirit through this effect unless you've specialed it properly first, in which case you'd be summoning from the graveyard. In which case you could be summoning a Dragoons from hand and then you're using its effect and that's neat. Uh, but again, that's a combo that requires an extender. The, the purest form of this combo is something that I do not like, how it manages the resource of Dragoons and how it is very, you know, valuable to have that card in your hand multiple, you know, points of play. Uh, just, you know, my own personal preference. I'm, like I said, if I make this combo, it's because it's the only option I had. Whereas if my hand was Diva Water, I'm doing something else. Like, I'm probably going to start the stage of this combo in a similar way, but I'm going to be going a different route towards the end. But just something to consider. But so your Bahama Shark is going to attach Dragoons, because those are the two materials under it. You're going to summon Totally Awesome from your extra deck. And then this Dragoons is going to trigger, and it's going to add Mulan Glacia to our hand. Now, there is exactly five waters in Grave at this point. The Bujin Link bringing back Dragoons put you down to four. Uh, so, like, that's why you want the Fishborg Launcher over Jet Synchron, because if you were using Jet Synchron here, you'd have four waters right now, and there would be no real way for you to correct that outside of discarding a water out of your hand, which means that the combo is inherently worse. Strictly because, you know, Diva plus Discard doing the exact same thing as just D.Va if you're playing Jet Synchron over Fishborg Launcher means that your combo is inherently just worse. And this is used for its typing in other better combos, like I've already said. So this card is 100% worth it for you to run. I'm personally only running this. I don't even play Jet Synchron anymore because Jet Synchron just usually never comes up in spaces where this card is also usable. Um, I've just been doing tons of testing with Mermel. Uh, and that's where, that's the conclusion I've drawn. But anyway... So what we're going to do is, because we got five waters in Grave, we're going to special summon this Moulin Glaze. Uh, off this combo, I prefer to summon it in defense position, so that if I get Lightning Stormed, it doesn't die. Um, like, yeah, you could negate Lightning Storm with Toad, but Toad could get baited first, obviously. Uh, there's a few things that uh, could come into play there. But so from here, we're going to use the Fishborg Launcher, summoning itself, and we're going to use it as a Link Material. So, what we're going to do is we are going to make an Appaloosa, and this Appaloosa is only going to have three materials. Not even that powerful of an Appaloosa, by the way. Not even a four material Appaloosa. So it's at a very easy point for you to attack this card. <laughs> and just, eh. I mean, it's cool. This combo is cool. And like I said, it's one of those things where it, I've had myself be able to, I've, I've been forced to do this combo a couple times in my testing on stream because it was the only option. The only card you have to play in your extra deck that is like 100% only for this combo is the Bujin Link. Any other combo, you're usually using something else. You can't use the Bujin Link as a Link material. You don't want to link away with Mulan Glaze because then it means like your already weak board can't even attempt to kill your opponent next turn. You can't even attempt to attack for game. Um, and yeah. It's just one of those deals. Now, your alternative here uh, is if you wanted to, like if your hand had something like a heavy infantry or something in it, uh, instead of linking away the needle fiber and the Bahamut shark and the launcher into a three material Appaloosa, you could leave the needle fiber on the board to go into Desert Locust on the following turn, taking another card out of their hands, and then the Abyssalatia could, you know, have synergy with cards like Heavy Infantry or something in your hand that you were not using. 
However, then we are in the territory of D.Va plus water cards in your hand, meaning that the entirety of the play would just be better going down a different route, <laughs> right? So this is sort of the best you can do with just D.Va. A three material Appaloosa, a toad. Uh, you could make the Appaloosa a four material Appaloosa if you want to get rid of the Moulin Glace that I highly don't recommend you do because again, it skips your next turn's battle phase, which means that your deck that specializes in stunning your opponent so you can kill them the next turn does not get to kill them. Meaning it puts you further behind a turn, which means your, get, your opponent is getting another card to their hand as a resource that they draw from the top of their deck, meaning it is going to be much more possibly likely for them to have some form of comeback play available to them. This Appaloosa is not that strong. If it was a 4 material Appaloosa, then it'd be kind of cool. Uh, I think I even said it was a 4 material Appaloosa at the beginning of this uh, video, but that's because I've been solitaring World Chalice combos where those one card combos end on a 4 material Appaloosa every single time and some other stuff as well. But this is a 3 material Appaloosa. <laughs> Hear her roar. <laughs> so. This is a very weak Appaloosa. If it negates one card, it's already at 16, which is very easy to be swung over. Uh, Toad negating something is nice. Again, you do have five cards left in your hand, so it does have some leeway there. In that, like, at this point, like, the only way that I found myself making this specific combo something that I have to go down in my testing that I've been alluding to, which I do on Twitch streams. If you want to catch those Twitch streams, link in the description to my Twitch page. I stream three times a week at minimum. So if you're interested in that, I'm, you know, the tools are there for you. If you want to watch me test Mermel and other decks and you can see what I'm talking about firsthand. But without that even being a factor, uh, the only times I've ever done the only diva play on those testing sessions, either on stream or outside of stream, are when my hands are clumped with things that are not usable, that like don't facilitate additional combo pieces, like multiple call by the graves, or something like multiple pot of avarices or whatever. But this is a play that you should know, because occasionally you get forced to make this play, because occasionally your deck does not give you the pieces that you need, and Deep Sea Diva is at three, so this is something that you could reliably open with uh, but again, it's just one of those things where I don't think this would be something that I would heavily expect to have to do all the time uh, Because it is fairly weak personally like this is not a strong Appaloosa uh, This is not a toad on the lat or this is a toad. <laughs> it is in fact a toad <laughs> I'm losing my mind on my last video that I posted people were like just deep sea diva is this one card play? It's like yes, I know But why are we acting like that's amazing? Why are we acting like it is going to end the game on the spot? It's not. So that is what I'm here to tell you and to show you. Um, yeah. This combo is cool. Here's how to do it. If you didn't know how to do it, you know now. But there's plenty of reason for you to never have to do this combo at all. Plenty of reason. Plenty. But anyway. That's going to be it for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. If you are new here and want to see more videos, like I've said earlier, subscribe to the channel. Love to welcome you on board. Click the bell so you see the uploads. I'd love to show you some more stuff that involves combos of other decks and also Mermels. There will be more combos of that in the future because we get more cards for this deck with the Deep Sea archetype. So, other than that, I guess that's where I'm going to leave you. <laughs> As I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.